Hey guys, welcome back to TC. We are so excited that you are with us. And again, my name is Brad Livingston and I am the lead pastor here. And man, we are pumped to be in the Faithful series. And so if you've been with us uh, in the weeks past, you know, we took a little break last week for Easter and we're so glad that many of you guys jumped on with us. But we're jumping back into the Faithful series because we wanna continue to talk about what it looks like to serve a faithful God when we feel faithless. Uh, and so today I wanna talk to you about this idea of an alternate title, an alternate title. And as we get ready to get into that, we want to jump straight into some of the scriptures that we're talking about when our lives could have hope and confidence and faith because we serve a faithful God, right? So Hebrews uh, 11 1 says it like this. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. Right. And so, man, it's believing for something, even though we don't see how it's going to come about. Right. First Corinthians 1 9 says this. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. So if your faith is in Jesus, if you're confidently giving your life to him, then God is faithful to be there and to walk you through that. Right. And then Hebrews again says it like this. Let us hold tight to the hope. Right. That Faith. Let us hold tight to that hope that we declare without wavering. In other words, we may have doubt sometimes. We may lose our confidence a little bit, but you know what? I'm not going to waver. I'm going to trust in this. For he who promised is faithful. That means that God who made a promise to you, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, that he'll supply all your needs, that God that makes those promises, he is faithful. And so we serve a faithful God. And so we want to talk to you about this idea of an alternate ending. And I've been on Twitter lately and looking at some different things. And as I've been scrolling through Twitter, there's two things that have been popping up. And one is like, what what is an alternate movie title for different things, uh, different movies that you've watched, right? So an alternate movie title. And secondly, is this idea of explain a movie plot badly, right? So, uh, and so I figured we'd pull a few of those. What does it look like to take a movie um, and to, to explain it with a different plot, right? So here's a couple of them just to throw them at you, right? The first one uh, is from World War Z. <laughs> and explain a film plot badly is a guy that saves the world from a devastating virus, aka the person we need right now. Okay, so <laughs> the next one is, um, oh yeah, 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 from Back to the Future. Explaining it badly, a creepy old man that tricks a boy to go back in time so he can kiss his mother. Okay, <laughs> Sketchy. All right, next. All right, uh, is a family's first Airbnb experience goes very wrong. <laughs> All right, next one is uh, from Star Wars, right? Father reunites with a long lost son and wants him to take over the family business. All right, so next one. Uh, is, uh, oh yeah, boy spends seven years being a third wheel. <laughs> so, <laughs> so next one is, uh, oh yes, Aladdin, right? Also known as a beautiful princess gets catfished, all right? If you're part of the generation that doesn't know what catfishing is, you can Google it, don't worry about it, all right? And then last but not least, uh, one of the Shrek movies, right? What is it? A guy learns to love a girl without her Instagram filters. All right, so there you have it. Uh, but no, nonetheless, right, we're talking about what does it look like to uh, explain your life differently? What does it look like for your life to have a different title? Because here's the deal, right, is that as we are navigating this journey, as we're going through this journey, right, what tends to happen is our life tends to take on moments. It tends to take on situations. It tends to take on things that are out of our control or even things that are in our control. But even though they're in our control, we make bad decisions or, or things get out of hand. And, and what happens is in the midst of our life, right, we, we find ourselves in positions where we could very easily give ourselves a title that God's not ready to give to us. We could very easy t easily take on a title. We could take on a theme. Our life could take on this plot. We could fall into the trap of believing what we think or what other people think our lives are going to look like rather than looking for what God wants our life to look like. And some of the situations like, man, what, like, man, look at Teresa, right? She had a great purpose in her life, but too bad she had that baby before she got married. Look at Brian. Too bad he dropped out of college uh, because he got the girl pregnant. Or look at Christy uh, who failed everything in her life 
life. And so now she's just going to be nothing. Look at so-and-so who, who, man, was on track for a great degree and then things fell through and she never pursued that job. Or look at all, look, so-and-so got arrested for drugs. And, and maybe you fall into different categories where you think it's too late for God to do something great with your life. You've already put your stamp. You've already let people or society or the world or even the enemy put a stamp on your life to say, you'll never be anything but this. And I'm here to tell you today that God can give your life an alternate title that changes the trajectory of your future. Your purpose is not concealed in your past or in your mistakes. Your purpose is identified in what God says it is. Therefore, you can have an alternate title. God can give you a different purpose, a different future. He can unlock the destiny and purpose that he has for you. And so just because you may have made a decision that ended up having you having a baby out of wedlock, or just because you made this decision and you dropped out of college, just because you made this decision and, and things went badly for you, your home got repossessed, you had to file bankruptcy, you went through these situations, it doesn't mean that that's all ever is going to happen for you. What it could mean is that God is setting you up to go through some difficult seasons so that when he brings you into the purpose that he has for you, he gets all the glory. And I'm going to tell you today that God wants to give your life an alternate title. And so what does that look like? Well, one of the stories in the Bible that I believe uh, has a decent title, but the way I see it, I think God wants to give it an alternate title is the battle at Mount Carmel. And it's found in 1 Kings chapter 18, all right? And so we're gonna go ahead and go there, 1 Kings 18, one, right? Because if I were gonna give this a different title, I would call this the setup because I believe God was on a mission to set some things up in this, right? So in the third year of the drought, the Lord said to Elijah, who was a prophet in that time, go and present yourself to King Ahab. Tell him that I will soon send rain. So they're in a drought, and he's telling Elijah to go tell the king that he will soon send rain, right? So that sounds like you, we're getting ready for a setup. So Elijah went to appear before Ahab. Now, what you may not know is that King Ahab had been trying to track down Elijah for some time now. That's what we read in 1 Kings, right? So Elijah's walking towards the place that God is singing to him where King Ahab is at. And he comes across Obadiah. And Obadiah sees him and starts going towards Elijah, right? And Obadiah is a believer in the Lord. He's confident. He trusts our God, right? Uh, and so Elijah sends Obadiah back to King Ahab. So he says, hey, listen, I want you to go tell him that I'm here. And there's a big conversation that happens where Obadiah says, I don't know, like it, I, I, this could be dangerous for me. And he's like, no, 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 trust me. Go back and tell him that I'm here. So Elijah finally gets to talk to King Ahab. And as he's talking to him, he tells him that, listen, you and your fathers have turned from God. You and your fathers have, uh, have started to serve the, the false gods, right? And so this is what he tells, uh, the, tells King Ahab, and then he tells the people, right? In 1 Kings 18, 19, he says it like this. He says, now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel. You see, even the God's people in Israel had been deceived. They had kind of looked away from God a little bit. He says, I want you to gather all of them from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel. And bring the 450 prophets of Baal. Well, Baal was a, a false god. He said, and the 400 prophets of Asherah. So he's, I want you to gather up 850 false prophets of false gods. I want you to get all of them together because it's about to go down, right? That's essentially what Elijah's saying. That's not in this translation, but that's, that's where I'm at with it, okay? So he says, I want you to gather all of them, right? And so uh, Elijah has two bulls brought in, right? And so they, they kill the bulls. They're getting ready because he says, we're going to challenge them to a sacrifice, right? And so in 1 Kings 18, 21, he says this, now, he went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? In other words, how long will you think that God is God, but there's also these other gods? And, and I want you to even ask yourself that question. How long are you going to waver between God being who he says he is in your life 
and you not trusting God to be who he says that he is in your life, right? How long will you waver between two opinions? How long will you waver between, man, I know God says he can supply all my needs, but man, I got this notice on my door and it doesn't look good. I got this thing in the mail and it says that I'm going to have to file bankruptcy. I got this, these people knocking on my door and they're telling me I'm going to get evicted. Like, how long are you going to waver between trusting God and trusting man, right? And so, he says that to them. He says, how long are you going to waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. In other words, he says, choose today whom you're going to serve. And so he puts them on mission, right? So he has the two uh, bulls brought in and he kills them to prepare for a sacrifice. And both of them are put on altars, right? And so uh, one Elijah says, is the altar that I'm going to prepare this bull for, for God, the God of Israel, the God we serve. And the other one is for Baal. And whichever one, as a matter of fact, he goes on and says in verse 24, he says this, then you call on the name of your God. So he's talking to the prophets and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He's God. In other words, the one that shows up with fire and burns up the sacrifice, the bull that we put on the altar, whichever one shows up, that's the real God. And so uh, Elijah was essentially saying, listen, we're going to put it all on the line here. And matter of fact, he says it like, I'm putting my flag in the ground. He was declaring that with unwavering faith who God was. You see, I think some of us wouldn't find ourselves in this position because some of us wouldn't have that confidence. Some of us, like, you know, it's like, I do trust God, but I don't know if I trust God that much. Like, I do trust that God's going to come through, but I don't know if I trust him enough to, like, make a display out of my faith. And you know what? God wants you to make a display out of your faith. He wants you to put him out in front of people so that he can show off what he's going to accomplish in your life. And so he goes there, right? And the thing is, is for some of us, our circumstances seem too big. Our obstacle is too large. Our struggle is too painful and our wounds are too deep. There's no way we could fall into that. One of my scenes that always stays in my mind when I think about some of this stuff is this scene from the movie Troy, uh, which has Brad Pitt in it, and uh, he's Achilles in this movie, and, and so he's going to fight, and uh, he's just like this dominant soldier. He can, he, can, he can take on anyone, and no matter who he comes in contact with, he can slay him. Like, he's just, he's straight up gangster in this movie. No one can beat him, right? And so in the beginning of this movie, this little boy runs up to him and he's, he's given him his, uh, his shield and sword. And as he walks up and hands him the shield and the sword, he says this to him. He said, I, I, I've heard about this enemy you're going to fight. He's the biggest warrior I've ever seen. And Achilles says, yeah. And he says, I, I, I wouldn't want to fight him. And he looks at him and says this, and that is why nobody will remember your name. And I want you to think for a second. When you die, are people going to talk about the faithfulness that you had in the God we serve? Or are people, is no one going to remember your name? Is your story going to go down in the record books of heaven as an amazing story where God came through because you trusted him? Or are you just going to be someone that floated through life very lackluster and, and you never took anything great. You never did anything daring. You never challenged with faith where God said, I want you to put a foot forward here. You didn't have the confidence in who God was because here was, here's what I'm here to tell you. There are some people who in faith are going to trust God and their name, their story will be remembered because God through their story will be glorified. And so, man, oh, we want this idea of having our story recognized, not for our fame, but so that God gets glory out of your story. So it goes back to a thing we said a few months ago, right? Smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. Listen, if you want to have the faith, that means you have to be put in situations where you need to use that faith. And that's what Elijah is doing. Here's, here's what I want you to understand. The story that God wants to write for your life is the one that causes everyone to stand amazed at his power. The story that God wants to write for your life, the, the story, the ending, the title he wants to give your life, it's the one that would cause everyone to stand amazed, not at how great you are, 
not at anything about you. He wants them to stand amazed at his power in your life. Can I tell you something today? God is invested in your story. God is invested in the outcome of your life. And so trust him with that confidence. Here's the deal. To have a story worth watching, right? To have a story worth watching, you're going to have to trust the one writing it. You see, we're talking about this title. We're talking about your life being a story. And listen, to have a story worth watching, you're going to have to trust the one writing it. See, I have my favorite filmmakers and producers. I have my favorite music producers. I talk about some of the music producers all the time. Me and my wife will ride in the car. And, and one of my favorite music producers goes back to the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So you're welcome, all of you 70s, 80s, and 90s music listeners. Um, his name's David Foster, incredible music writer, incredible artist, incredible producer. Some of your greatest uh, man acts, some of your greatest singers, they all use some of his talents. I mean, everyone from Michael Jackson to Shaka Khan to uh, man, Earth, Wind & Fire, all these guys at one point uh, were using David Foster. And here's the thing, anytime I hear something from that era, I don't even have to Google it. I know if it's one of his songs because I can hear his nature in it. He had a tendency to do certain things with music and I could always tell that it's one of his songs. I just gotta hear it and I know. And here's the thing I want you to understand. What is the thumbprint? What is the nature on your story? Is it God showing up? Is, is the nature of your story, is the, the signature of your life one of faith and God providing, because I'm here to tell you, he wants it to be, because you gotta trust the one writing your story. You see, it's so powerful that we come to this place where God writes it for us. I mean, now we're talking Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Psalms 84, 11 says, he will hold back no good thing from his children. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose and his riches and glory. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. I'm here to tell you today that the one writing your story is one that's ready to save, one that's ready to deliver, one that's ready to use your faith and obedience to show the world a great movie, a great story, a great title where he's a deliverer, where he's the hero. And I'm here to tell you today that God can do it, but it's not just that he can do it. With your faith, he will do it and he'll step into your life. The problem is that too many of us would rather have an easy life than a miraculous one. I'm gonna let you read that again. Too many of us would rather have an easy life than a miraculous one. As long as the boat doesn't get rocked and as long as the seas don't get too stormy, we'd rather have that life than one where our boat does get rocked a little bit, where the seas do get bad, where things do get heavy and where things do get hard. But in the midst of those seas, in the midst of that heaviness, in the midst of those hardships, God is the deliverer for us. I don't know about you guys, but I wanna live a miraculous, faith-filled life, not an easy, faithless life. We want God to come through for us. So let's go back to the story of Elijah, 1 Kings 18, 26 through 29. So they prepared, talking about the prophets of Baal, one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called out on the name of Baal from morning until noontime, shouting, O oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no reply of any kind. Then they danced, hobbling around the altar that they had made, right? And about noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder, he said. Surely he is a God, right? Perhaps he's daydreaming or relieving himself, or maybe he's away on a trip. Maybe he's doing some business or maybe he's asleep and he needs to be awakened, right? Can y'all say like P E to the T T Y? Like, man, Elijah's coming out of the gate petty to these, <laughs> to these Baal uh, worshipers, man, to all these prophets of this false God. So he's coming out, he's like, yeah, I don't, mate, where, where is he? Now listen, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, if it were me, this is exactly what I would be doing, right? Calling them out, be like, I don't know where he's at, this is crazy, huh? Because I know y'all pray to him a lot, so how many of your prayers does he not? Like, I'd be selling out constantly, right? So they raved all afternoon doing this. 
even to the point that they start cutting themselves, right? All kinds of craziness. And Elijah finally is like, all right, enough. He gets into the evening time and he calls all the people around him, right? So he brings them all together. And you can read all of this in 1 Kings chapter 18, but he brings them all together, right? And he finally digs a trench around the altar, his altar, right? And then he says, I want you to go get four uh, jars of water and cover the animal with it. So they pour it. He says, I want you to do it again. So they do it again. He says, I want you to do it again. So they do it again. Twelve jars of water are poured on the animal. The moat, he digs a moat around his uh, sacrifice even, and it's filled with water. And then he does this in 1 Kings 18, 36. Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel. You see, here's what I want you to understand. God will use your obedience to display his power in the story of your life. God will use your obedience, just like with Elijah. He walks up and he says, all right, God, I did all the things you told me to do. And for many of us, we have to look to God and say, all right, God, I've done all the things you've told me to do. And in those moments, that's when God gets to display his power in the story of your life. And so what happens Verses 38 through 39, immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even dried up all the water in the trench that Elijah had dug around the altar. The fire from God burned up everything. The people were amazed, the Bible says, and then it even says that They stood back and said, surely he is God. The the people worshiped because in the moment, in that moment, it says that the people saw it and they fell face down on the ground and cried out, the Lord, he is God. Yes, the Lord is God. And what is it going to be in your life that you finally trust God enough with confidence to say, you know what, he's faithful that you put this on display and you say, you know what, God, I'm giving you this. I'm giving you this situation. I'm giving you the fact that I don't understand how you're going to come through. I'm giving you the fact that I don't understand what's happening here. I'm giving you my life. I'm going to come to you. I'm surrendering this to you. And you know what? I'm trusting that you're going to come through for it. And as God comes through for it, the people that are around you watching, the people that are looking for what's going to happen in your life, the people that are checking you out, the people that are wanting to see whether or not your faith fits the words that you've talked about. You've declared that God is good. You've helped them walk through their circumstances and told them to trust God. Now it's your moment to trust God. And are you going to remain faithful to a God who is faithful or are you going to fall faithless? And in that moment, in that season, in those circumstances, when you remain faithful, when you remain obedient to God, when you remain in his care, when you trust in him, when you remain faithful, he shows himself faithful. And when he shows up to show himself faithful, All the people around you see the goodness of God and they see that they can trust him too because that's how he shows up in our lives. And so Elijah then sends Ahab away. He says, all right, you need need to go. Matter of fact, he tells him, rain's probably going to be coming. You need to go after this. And and shortly after that, 1 Kings 18.45, we see this. And in a little while, The heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. You see, I want you to understand this. You may not see how it's going to happen yet, but keep looking for God's ending. You may not see how it's going to happen yet, but you got to keep looking for God's ending in your life. And I even want to tell you this, God's ending God's ending. Listen, you need to not just be looking for the possible endings. You need to be looking for God's ending. You don't just need to be looking for the what ifs. You don't just need to be looking for the possibilities. Listen, in faith, it's not what if these bad things happen. It's I'm trusting God that he's going to carry me into this season of life. And for too many of us, we let the what ifs of God tear us apart. We let the what ifs of God carry us into difficult places in our life where we don't know who to trust. We don't know what to do. And it's in that season of those what ifs 
that we need to start declaring, you know what? I'm believing God's going to come through. For this. I know what, what if I lose my house? But you know what? What if God miraculously provides and I don't? What if I get this bad doctor's note? You know, what if God miraculously heals and I don't get that doctor's note? Or even if I do, he comes through for me. Man, what if, what if you know, the fact that I had this kid, you know, before I was married or what if I, because I dropped out of college or what if uh, because I had this drug addiction or what, you know, but what if God took all of that and made your life a testimony of what he can do when things don't go according to your plan? What if you trusted God in that type of way? You see, God needed to send rain to end the drought in the story of Elijah. If you remember, at the very beginning of 1 Kings chapter 18, there was a drought, and he sent Elijah to tell him that rain was coming, to tell King Ahab, rain is coming. But the reality is this. Before he sent the rain, he wanted everyone around there. He wanted all the people in Israel. He wanted the prophets of Baal. He wanted the prophets of Asherah. He wanted everybody to know before he sent the rain, he wanted them to know who he was so that when he sent the rain, they worshiped him for the rain and not their gods for the rain. You see, in your life, sometimes God wants to make sure that you're ready to receive what he's sending you so that when he sends it, you know who to worship for it. It's not that you worked hard and got it. It's not that you deserve it. It's not that you took the test, you earned the degree. It's not that you worked for the promotion. It's that everything you have right now, God gave you. And so sometimes he's going to let you go through seasons to remember who he is so that when you get what he gives you, you give back to him what's his. The glory, the honor, the generosity, the obedience, because he's faithful. So I'm going to tell you today that you may think that your ending has already been written. It's too late Nothing good can come from my life, but God can give you an alternate ending to your story. You may think that your life's movie isn't worth watching, but God can give you an alternate story where he becomes the hero and he gets the glory out of, he, out of him coming through in your life. You may think that your life's movie can only end one way, but God can show up. He can show you that his title, his intention is to create an award-winning life story out of the life that you're currently living. Hear me today. God wants to give you an award-winning life story out of your life. He wants to give that to you so that he gets the glory out of your life, right? Look, too many of us, we want the testimony without the test, right? We're saying, God, use me until he uses us to show us power. Because then when God uses us to show his power, he has to use someone who is powerless, right? He has to bring hope into situations that look hopeless, which means the person in it has to feel hopeless, which means if God is going to restore a miracle of hope into your hopelessness, he's got to let you go through a season where you feel hopeless, right? If he's going to bring a miracle of victory in your life, it's got to feel like you've already lost the battle. If he's going to bring a miracle of healing into your life, it's got to seem like the doctors have already made their decision on your behalf. If he's going to bring a miracle of financial breakthrough into your life, then it's going to have to seem like the bank is ready to take your house. If he's going to bring a, a miracle of a reconciliation into your marriage, then it's got to look like your husband or your wife is ready to leave you. If he's going to bring a miracle into your life of your kids believing in Jesus, then it's going to look in situations like they're too far gone. If he's going to use your life to bring a miracle, then it's going to have to look hopeless. If he's going to use your life as a display for the world to see how big he is, then it's going to have to look like how small you are. So if you're living a life that feels hopeless, if you're living a life that needs a miracle, if you feel faithless, I'm here to tell you that you can trust in a God who is faithful. Even, we'll put it to you this way, you'll find the miracle of your story when you're ready to give him the glory. You'll find the miracle of your story. You'll find that hope. You'll find that joy. You'll find that financial provision. You'll find that healing. You'll find the things that God wants to bring into your life. You'll find those things in your story when you're ready to say, there's no way I earned this. There's no way I should have got this promotion. There's no way I should have got this degree. There's no way that I should have been able to get through this. I had this drug addiction. I had this alcohol problem. I had this porn addiction. I had all of these things, man. I, I jacked up. Things were messed up. My life was going in a bad direction. There's no way I should have got this in my story, but because of who God is in my life, now he gets the glory. And I'm here to tell you today that God can do that. John 10, 10 says this, if the thief or the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. 
And for some of you, the thief has shown up in your life. He's stealing, he's killing, he's trying to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have, say that word with me, life. Say it again, life. And have it abundantly. God wants you to have an abundant life. He wants to change the trajectory of your story. He wants to give your life an alternate title. He's ready to take you on a different journey. And that's you today. I just wanna pray with you right now. And we would love to hear, what is it that you're trusting God for? What area of your life is it that you're putting your confidence, your hope, your faith in God moving? And we actually, we wanna pray with you on that. Matter of fact, right now in the comments on this video, some of our team is dropping a link that you can send us prayer requests. And what is it that you're wanting your title to change for? What is it you're wanting God to be known for in your story? Is it financial breakthrough? Is it healing? Is it supernatural provision? Is it faith? Is it hope? Is it just more joy? What is it that you're ready to overcome so that God gets the glory out of you overcoming it? Man, send us that note. We would love to know what it is so that we can pray and agree with you that God is gonna do that for you. And so feel free to fill out that link, on, fill out the card, and we know that God is gonna be faithful to carry you through that season. I wanna pray for you right now. God, we just pray for every person, Lord, who has felt faithless, God, every person who in seasons of life and maybe even right now is feeling faithless. They feel like there's just no way that they can keep going. They feel like there's no way that you can show up. They feel like it's just too late. God, I pray that you show them right now. You show them your power. You show them what you're capable of doing. God, I pray that they would look in your word and they would see people, people like Peter and John they would see people like Job. They would see people like David, Elijah. That none of these people were perfect. They just had a heart towards you that was. And so God, I pray that you show them, God, that they can have a confidence that you're gonna come through. So God, I pray right now, Lord, for supernatural provision where people need that. God, for supernatural healing where people need that. I pray that the presence of God would come and meet them in amazing ways. God, to restore joy, to restore hope, to bring peace where chaos is ensuing in their mind and their hearts. God, I pray that you would do that. You're confident in us and we wanna be confident in you. And so Lord, we surrender to you today. We say thank you because we can trust in you today. Thank you and we love you. And if you're watching this today and you need Jesus in your life, you, you don't have confidence and you don't have faith because you don't currently believe, you haven't given your life to the one that can give us that confidence and that faith. His name is Jesus and he, he went to the cross and he died on the cross and when he died on the cross, he paid for the sin that exists in your and my life. And today, if you want Jesus to wipe that sin away, to give you a fresh start and a new beginning, I'm here to tell you today that he's ready to give it to you. The Bible says that if we would confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart, that we would put our faith in Jesus, that we could be saved. And today, you don't have to become perfect. Today, you can put your faith in a perfect God, that he wants you to give you his life. And if you're ready for Jesus to give you a fresh start and a new beginning, I wanna invite you to pray this prayer after me, all right? And this prayer doesn't make you saved. This prayer puts words to the actions of your heart, that you're putting your faith in Jesus. You're believing that Jesus paid for your sins. And that faith is what makes you say, but we want to pray a prayer out loud to confess that Jesus, we're giving you our lives. So I want to invite you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me. I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you paid for my sins. I believe you resurrected. And through your life and through your death and through that resurrection, I can be saved. So I give you my life. Make me a new person. Forgive me and give me a fresh start. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, listen, we are celebrating with you. If you'll do me a huge favor, either if you're new 
Uh, if, you're, if you're still new with us at Transformation Church, uh, even joining us online, and you've yet to fill out a Connect card, or if you prayed that prayer today, uh, and we would love for you to fill out a Connect card, regardless of which category you fall in, because we wanna know who you are, and we wanna help you on this journey where God is leading you to amazing things, where he's gonna change your title, he's gonna give you an alternate ending, because he is faithful. So our team is dropping the links in the comments right now. Uh, you can also go to transformationchurch.com. You can find everything that you need to find there, whether it's on giving, whether it's the connect card, it's all there. So man, we would love it if you would go check that out.